Now, would I bring my man around Ariana Grande? Yeah, because my man's not gonna do nothing. I I know it's hard for y'all to for y'all hating ass to understand uh, the concept of being a girl's girl with like no ulterior motives. Be that sorry to break to you. That's just me. Hey guys, it's your girl Cameron and I'm back at it again with another video. And today we are going to be talking about the term girl's girl. Recently, the term girl's girl has been dropped in almost every conversation relating to women's relationships and conflicts, specifically in pop culture. Whether it's from the likes of Ariana Grande's recent situations to Nicki Minaj and Megan Thee Stallion's beef, from the Kardashians and Selena and Haley's drama. Through the years, we have seen this idea of fans upholding a sense of code, particularly for female celebrities, and upholding this girl's girl term, right? It seems like it's growing a value for uh, consumers to connect with their favorite artists and their branding. And today, I wanna sit here and break this down, do a bit of a deep dive, but also talk about why I think that this isn't as conducive or productive as I think people assume that it is. And it's really just a fluffy code word for what we're really beating around the bush with. If you don't know, a lot of my content is pop culture geared. So that's the lens that we're going to be looking at the girls girl conversation in today. So like, comment down below. What do you guys think of this topic and how it pertains to women's relationships in Hollywood? Let's chat it up in the comments and hit the subscribe button down below. We are on the way to 10K. And without further ado, let's just get straight into the video what is the girl's girl i'm sure a lot of you guys clicked on this and said what what are we talking about today i'm here to break it down so from high school friends to the girl that you meet in the bar restroom that you'll never see again there is an unspoken code the girl's girl particularly feels a moral obligation or has moral allegiance to other women, women that they know, women that they don't know. And you might think, isn't this just simply being a good person? Absolutely. It's the stick together and look out mentality because women are often outnumbered in such industries, uh, especially when we talk about positions of power and treated poorly while also being put in unsafe situations. So it's also shared understanding of our experience and keeping an eye out and being kind, friendly, again, supportive, empathetic. And it's essentially upholding sisterhood. Dr. Amelia Morris, a lecturer in media and communications at the University of Exeter, um, says, quote, throughout popular culture, women and girls are positioned as being in competition with one another. The term bitchy is itself inextricably gendered, conflating femininity with malice. So women are already positioned as being catty, being drama filled, being irrational, right? While it's also put on to men that their interpersonal relationships are easygoing and non-drama filled and chill. So there isn't, I don't think, this need as much to outline um, and enforce this fluffy code name for men. At least it's not upheld. We could talk about bro code, but I don't think the bros really care about bro code. And when we talk about having a code or women upholding each other or fans also expecting that out of their favorite celebrities, their favorite artists, actresses. Often their male peers are plagued with major flaws and we see it all the time, whether that's abuse, sexual harassment, the R word, violent tendencies and behaviors and they're still allowed to have careers their friendships aren't as deeply questioned their relationships aren't as deeply questioned while women are being either canceled or praised for upholding or not upholding a standard of the girl's girl right and you wonder like this dichotomy between these two experiences and why why why? So from several posts and some surveys, I've been compiling what a lot of women list as being a girl's girl or not being one. And some of the girl's girl commandments include 
complimenting other women slash congratulating them. We all know when you're in a bar, you're in a club, you go to the bathroom, you might be a little tipsy, you see the other girl in there and you're like, oh my gosh, like you are so gorgeous, like you are beautiful, like, yeah. Another one, not gatekeeping anything from other women. So if another girl asks you, girl, where did you get your pants? Where did you get your your shirt? Where'd you get your shoes? Where's your lipstick from? You're willingly offering that information to help another sister out. Having another girl's back and also looking out for her safety. Being able to tell another woman when she's wrong. However, saying things they might not want to hear, but in a caring way. I think that's important. Championing for women via fair and just treatment. Um, and being friendly and relatable or non-standoffish. If that's a couple, add some in the comments below. And what's not a girl's girl? Being a hater. And this includes backhanded compliments or throwing constant shade to particularly people you consider your friends. Trying to embarrass another girl in front of a group of guys. Being boy crazy. Greeting your boyfriend before they greet you. Home wrecking. That whole quote that goes into, I don't owe her any loyalty. The whole, I want my boyfriend to be rude to any girl who's not me. Don't put this on me, but somebody in the comments said if they act like Nicki Minaj, kicking women when they're down and laughing at another girl's pain, mean-spirited, particularly around other women. So when we're going to talk about some of these situations, we're going to look at them through the lens of a lot of these, these compiled lists of what people agree that women agree is important. If you're 21, take a shot every time I say girls, girl. Not a shot. Take a sip. I don't want you drunk. So let's talk about how this term makes its way into the industry. And why is it idealized, particularly in the realm of women in Hollywood? Um, we don't see these conversations had in the same lengths as men, right? Nobody really questions, oh, these guys aren't friends. When we talk about the industry, women are simply outnumbered when we discuss positions of power and specifically the music industry and celebrity land so due to the ridicule that women face by the hands of the press and fans particularly the unequal payment to male counterparts sexual harassment there is a sense of desired camaraderie because we all understand each other's plights, right? After all, there's only so many women who understand the hardship of being in the spotlight. So I think that people idealize um, female relationships in these spaces. Let's discuss a few examples of how the girl's girl has showed itself or not showed itself in the industry as of late. <sighs> My girl. Ariana Grande. She breaks the ultimate girl's girl commandment by the book. Thou shall not steal someone's man. Recently, Ariana Grande has been the center of attention with her home wrecking ways. And if we look at this timeline, Ariana married her husband or her ex-husband Dalton Gomez on May 2021. They started filming Wicked in June 2022. In August 2022, Ethan Slater and wife Lily J welcomed a baby. Ariana and Dalton were rumored to be separated since January. July 17th, 2023, Ariana and Dalton split. July 20th, 2023, Ariana Grande and Ethan Slater rumored to be dating. TMZ reported the news that Slater was also no longer with his wife. This is a theater couple, if I've ever seen one. July 26, 2023, Slater files from divorce from his wife, Lily J. July 27th, Slater's ex-wife said, quote, Ariana's the story, really. She's not a girl's girl. My family is just collateral damage. And the worst part <laughs> is that Grande and Gomez went on double dates with Ethan and his wife. Many people are saying this blanket statement that, is not a girl's girl. There have been some scenarios, quite a few scenarios that people have speculated um, with past boyfriends that she either broke up a happy relationship or she instigated and she is a part of the reason that some women were left heartbroken. And I know you you guys are going to like this coming from me. I am an Ariana fan. Um, do I think what she has done 
based off of what we are considering facts, because we really don't truly know the backstory of everything, as we don't for most situations on the internet. It's not enough to make me really stop listening to her music. Now, would I bring my man around Ariana Grande? Yeah, because my man's not going to do nothing. And I get it. I'm actually really not arguing. Like, if you feel like that's something that you just can't deal with, you don't support her at all, I'm not arguing you with that. If that's how you feel, you have a right to feel that way because looking at some of these facts, it looks shady. And it seems like this reputation is catching up to Ariana. And with her new release of Yes And and her upcoming album, many people are automatically discarding her her new music, her new era, and are being very vocal about it. I did a reaction to Yes And and I had quite a few guys in the comments saying, don't care, don't like her, I'm done, I supported her before, but she is just not a girl's girl. She's a home wrecker. A lot of the vitriol being spewed is based on sources and blind items. And a lot of it is being directed towards her versus the guy. I mean, you guys can call him ugly all day, but like, <laughs> he knows this. That wasn't nice. Okay. And I don't personally believe that like in situations of cheating and being home wreckers that the woman holds no responsibility. I'd be pissed. I'd be pissed at the girl too. But always remember, the man deserves the torches too. Ariana is a huge, she's a main example of, of this girls, girls um, discourse going into play. And a lot of people are not having it. Now, on the opposite end of the spectrum, we have somebody like Taylor Swift, who is the self-proclaimed girls girl. With her girl squad famously known um, with multiple friendships and friend groups. We all remember a lot of these people that have been attached to Taylor and have said they were very, very close with her, if not best friends. We have Cara Delevingne, Blake Lively, Carly Kloss, Gigi Hadid, Selena Gomez, Soraya, Haley Seinfeld, Lord, Camila Cabello, Emma Stone. I guess Taylor Swift was Selena Dunham's bridesmaid. I spice. We all know that Taylor will make it known she don't play about her friends when it comes to a man. We all remember when Selena and Justin were backstage and Taylor stuck her tongue out. She said, I don't like you. And she made it very clear. This girl can adapt, which is another proponent for the girl's girl. She gets along with other women easily, right? So for instance, take a notice at her new Chiefs crew. The camaraderie she now has with Brittany Mahomes, who's Patrick Mahomes' wife, seemingly quickly. And Brittany, who used to be very close with Travis Kelsey's ex-girlfriend, Kayla Nicole, Brittany is now buddy-buddied with Taylor Swift. Despite Kayla Nicole going wedding dress shopping with her and being one of eight on Brittany's bachelorette weekend in 2022. So this is also why the girls' girls can be muddy because you think it's like, hey, you were like this close with Travis's ex-girlfriend for this many years. They dated for a long time. And as soon as the new girl comes in town, you're best friends with the new girlfriend. And it's muddy because I understand the principle of the situation hurting. But in the limelight, are things that personal? You try to just keep things kosher for the appearance or you genuinely get along with someone and it's just a small world it is what it is and actually when we talk about taylor swift she's been in the tabloids a lot recently for her new relationship travis kelsey's ex maya benberry told the daily mail that the footballer had cheated on her back in the day she had won the catching kelsey show i used to watch that um, in an attempt to warn Swift, Ben Barry added, Taylor seems like such a fun girl with a beautiful spirit, so I wish her the best of luck, but I wouldn't be a girl's girl if I didn't advise her to be smart. There we go, hearing that term yet again. As she's giving Taylor a warning, it also puts into question if Taylor heard this warning and doesn't take caution or retreat, is she not a girl's girl? If she's dating a man who treated another woman poorly, like it becomes this cycle because then you look and you say, well, Taylor has been a champion for women. She's been cheated on. She's been done dirty. She's been done bad. So then it creates this never ending cycle. Okay, well, maybe Taylor's not because she got this warning and clearly she's proceeding. So it's the classic tale of girl, I warned you. Okay, and sometimes women are looked at differently if they don't take heed or they don't um, pay attention to these warnings. So it does become 
like a moral high ground and then we start judging based off of things that we don't even know as factual information and you paint a picture of somebody's character based off of these especially when we're talking about our female celebrity so back to taylor when you look at her on the surface she is the internet's poster child of the girl's girl since as long as i can remember Nicki minaj man somebody said quote who's not a girl's girl or what is not a girl's girl somebody said if they are Nicki Minaj. And as of recent, I think a lot of people have been seeing her true colors. I think Nicki has fallen victim to, not by fault of her own, but the I want to be the only girl trope, or I get along better with the guys. This has been employed in the music industry because it's male dominated. And when we look at certain genres like rap or hip hop, when you're a woman, you do kind of have to learn how to hang with the guys to survive in that space. And Nicki Minaj had to do that. And I think there has been a bit of a syndrome of being the only or being the top for so long that it has become uncomfortable that other people are speaking out against her or not kissing the ground that she walks on. (laughs) Point blank. Recently, Nicki Minaj has been off her hinges after Megan Thee Stallion released her Hiss record, which I believe Megan was fully warranted. We see that Nicki, throughout this conflict, has positioned herself as being not very empathetic. She's shown a lot of her true colors and how she really feels, and she's really good at invalidating other women's experiences. For one, she's absolutely kicked Megan when she was down. This was not the first time that she's referred to Megan as Bigfoot. Go check the text with Lotto that happened, I don't know, almost a year ago. And this was when trials were happening and she was being ridiculed and you're calling her Bigfoot. And then not to mention she recently just made a diss track called Bigfoot. She's brought up Megan's deceased mother. That's very distasteful. Like, that's so disgusting. And... Although Nikki says she tries to show genuine love, you're also always positioning all these girls as fake wannabes, untalented, and just wanting a come up off of your name. And it's never seemingly her fault. That's breaking another girl's girl commandment. Whether it's her beef with Cardi, Remy, Lotto, Mariah, Megan, Leanne, Lil' Kim, the rap sheet is long. Okay, and that's not to say that none of these conflicts, she's never been valid in feeling any type of way, but when you have a slew of women who have had issues with you and they're all primarily saying the same thing, right? Is your track record is proving that you're not you're not who you say you are. And as for her husband's victim, Nikki can say all she wants for being honest and uplifting women. She simultaneously has gaslit her husband's victim has allowed fans to dox his victim along with other people who speak out against her. Uh, The amount of videos I've seen of people getting doxxed on Twitter, on Instagram this week has been absolutely insane. And you're sitting here liking the tweets. You're sitting here encouraging the buffoonish behavior. And if we want to talk about hate trains, you allegedly having it worse because you can never really like have empathy for anybody else's situation. Meg was harassed and is still harassed till this day for being shot, basically being a victim, and was mocked by you. Artists in the industry were against Megan, and still are. She's been called a liar. She's been called every name in the book by you, too. But no, okay, no one has ever had it anywhere near as hard as Nikki. No one's ever had a hate train that bad. Fight me in the comments. Fight me. And she also weaponizes the black woman card when she proves time and time again she don't really care. Don't use the whole girls, girls, woman thing to make your point. When in the same breath, you don't care. And whether it was her defending Jesse Nelson's black fishing allegations, and then also going off on another black woman for calling the girl out. Print them text messages out. Bust your ass open and shove it up your motherfucking ass. If that's the case, Tell all of these singers that y'all follow and all of these reality TV people that y'all follow, tell them to take off their spray tan and their tans and their lips and their um, everything they're doing. That means the black girls can't wear a long blonde weave uh, wig down to our feet. We're going to do whatever the fuck we want, when we want, how we want. 
So all I have to say is that if your fan base is threatening to vandalize Meg's parents' graves and you are condoning and potentially encouraging such behavior, forget girl's girl. Like, that ship sailed. We all know that that's not what this is. You are not a good person. And then even when you put in the music, though, you just, you're throwing cheap shots and really low blows. And apparently Nikki was a victim of abuse as well. So for you to be laughing and mocking abuse that is really sad because like i said a lot of women have been through certain situations because rihanna knows that she's she was a superstar with or without controversy she's beautiful with or without controversy she's loved with or without controversy i'm sorry sympathy 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 but when you need constant fucking sympathy and then you get on social media and tell somebody ain't nobody gonna respond to me if Nicki Minaj had done any of those things, oh, y'all would have a lot to say. But I understand heavy is the head that wears the crown. I am the queen, okay? And I think those are one of those things that to me is untouchable, especially if you expect empathy as well in return. And then if we go on the flip side, we can talk about Meg Thee Stallion. She is often perceived as a girl's girl. Women love Megan, okay? So she's come out with her catchy quote, her catchy tagline, hot girl summer. She has a very bubbly, likable personality, and she seems to be friends with a lot of women in the industry. I'm like a true, true um, Meg supporter, and um, I hate that other man. So I love, I love Megan Thee Stallion. Mm -hmm. I love her. Mm -hmm. And if anybody tries her when it comes to that sorry ass man, it's it's a it's a do or die fight for me. However, some people have also said that that's not necessarily the truth. Some people have implied that Megan doesn't deserve sympathy because she isn't a girl's girl truly based off of her best friend Kelsey who was also involved in the shooting she was in the car and she was there that night allegedly there was discrepancy that Megan was messing with someone that Kelsey was messing with and some people are using this as a basis as to why she should have gotten shot or to justify it which is sick in itself I mean that's misogynistic just out the gate then on the other hand we get people from Megan's high school who are coming out the woodwork saying like, Megan, like, from who I understand, she was well-liked by everybody. She was nice. She was kind. She had a lot of friends. She was down. She was cool. So you got other people singing her praises, right? And we all can't be liked by everybody. But I think that's also why um, you have to be careful what you spend so much energy to or condemn certain people for. Because we're just basing things off of what we see on the internet. We really don't know these people, right? And that is ultimately the main catalyst for all of this. And we can talk about Ice Spice said, quote, people want to be all, I'm a girl's girl, but then behind the scenes being bitches. And a lot of people thought that this was a subliminal towards Lotto. Lotto has used this term girl's girl quite often. Girl's girl, like. We, I was raised in a household where it's like sisterhood. It's just me and my sister. So I think I got like a different perspective on female rap than other people. I'm like that in real life and it just flow over into a lot of world because that's how Alyssa is. I, I really be fans of these girls. I am not going to debunk this like me not being a girl's girl thing every week. I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to say this once. I, I know it's hard for y'all, to, for y'all hating ass bitches to understand. Uh, the concept of being a girl's girl with like no ulterior motives but sorry to break to you that's just me and some people felt like this might have been a dig that maybe i spice is saying you're not really that girl like you're not really that girl who's looking out in behind the scenes you're really trying to compete like you're really trying to tear down so Again, this conversation is is coming up, especially in the context of the industry, when men don't really have to, like, address this, right? You get to be, you have your relationships with who you have relationships with, but it doesn't go much deeper than that, especially not in interviews. Is the girl's girl vital for industry survival? With a lot of these examples in the industries, we see that actions should genuinely speak louder than words. A lot of stuff that we've been seeing is kind of hearsay, so we don't really know the direct impact that it has had on some people's lives. But action is important because that is the stuff that tends to really shift and and make things better for women, particularly in an industry like music. So if we know that Girls Girl, in my opinion, is just a fluffy 
way, in simplified way to, to kind of describe feminism in a way. We must all acknowledge that feminism isn't always all inclusive and it doesn't always benefit all women. So this definition of girl's girl could really mean different things to different people, right? I think this is why there's so many hurt feelings, especially in the industry like music or acting, because you assume, okay, we're all going through similar experiences, so we're all going to support each other and stand up for one another. However, people fall short, especially when this is based on different definitions of what a girl's girl is or what feminism is, right? For for example, a microcosm of this scenario I'm talking about is white feminism is very different from womanism. Womanism is often used in the context of women of color, particularly black women, fighting for their rights because a lot of white feminism doesn't include certain people. We all face misogyny. But personally, I think the girl's girl is absolutely, I think it's an idealistic, lovely concept. I really do. But for me, I don't need you to girl boss me to death. I don't need you to over compliment me to the point where you're self-deprecating, okay? I prefer to surround myself with women who are have honest conversations, right? Um, who watch out for my back and my safety in social situations. Women who advocate and speak up for the unjust treatment of other women or advocating for things like fair, equal pay because there's even pay discrepancies between women. So being a girl's girl is more than just thinking about yourself, right? Or the cute, the, the cutesy things that come with being a girl. Oh, let's take pictures. Oh, let's do this. Oh, let's do that. Oh, you're my girl squad. You're this, you're that. To me, I, I think that we're really dancing around this idea of feminism. It's just very interesting to me how a lot of women are now being bullied by other women on the internet, doxxed on the internet, where it starts to become a contradiction. Because yo, those of you guys are in Hailey Bieber's comments saying, you're a mean girl, you're terrible, you're horrible, you're this, like saying all of these things about her, reading her for filth, reading her relationship, all of that. You guys are saying that she's not a nice girl and she's not a girl's girl, but y'all are in her comments calling her every name in the book. I think it's the pot calling the kettle black. So I think we need to take a look at ourselves in the mirror too and focus on being decent people. So maybe it's time that we stop holding up certain standards to our fave celebrities that we don't hold up to ourselves. And that, my friends, is my TED Talk on the girl's girl. But let's talk about it down below. Um, I will be sure to get back to as many of you guys as possible and hit that subscribe button down below. We are so close to 10K subscribers, y'all. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.